Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and welcome to episode 58 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Now today I'm doing something different. You know, I don't cover a lot of games on my channel. Uh, occasionally new one from for the C64, a new one for the Amiga, I'll do a preview on, but it's not the main uh, thrust of my channel. But with all of us right now, either being in a voluntary quarantine or a mandatory quarantine in our homes, what better time to get out some of our retro machines and play some of the new games on our platforms. And I'm talking new games for the VIC-20. I'm talking new games for the Commodore 64, even new games for the beautiful little Plus 4 here. Now that one is the one that's on the screen. That's Curse of Rabenstein, which I'll be talking about in a minute. And it's available for Commodore 64, Plus 4, and C16 with expanded memory, and also the Amiga. And there's also some other computers it's available for, but they're not Commodore, so who cares? <laughs> Just kidding, Spectrum users. I love you guys. But for now, let's jump right into these games. I'm going to tell you if they're free, which a lot of them are, if they're really, really good price, or if you just should just get them because they're such awesome games. Let's jump right into it, starting with the VIC-20 offerings. Rodman is the creation of Misfit, who created classics such as Cheese and Onion and Super Gotron. This is a mix of Pac-Man, Bomberman, and a touch of insanity. Rodman has to clear three rooms in each level as there's another room in the tunnel above and below him. He can pick up bombs and drop them to defeat the monsters, but he can also blow himself up with them too. He's offering it free for download. A physical copy is published by my friends at The Future Was 8-Bit. Vic Nibbler is a recreation of the Rockola game from the 80s, created by Hugo. The snake has to eat all the food on the level, but grows as he eats, so he has to be careful not to run into himself. It's an addicting game with great Vic-20 sounds. It requires a 3K expansion and can be downloaded free from their website or buy a physical cartridge from the future was 8-bit. Get this game, you will love it. Now let's head over to the Commodore 64, where there have been no shortage of new games in 2020. Let's highlight a few. Antonio Savannah, Saul Cross, and STE86 work together on the C64 remake of the classic Atari 2600 game, Keystone Capers. Oh my goodness, is this a great version. You play the officer chasing the bad guy through the department store. We used to have those before Amazon. You have to dodge and jump and duck obstacles or you lose time trying to catch the crook. Incredible graphics and audio make this a must-have. The crew's also made other Activision games, such as Crackpot here. In this, you're a dude on a roof throwing pots at marauding spiders, because video games. If they get to the top, they damage your wall and the wall starts crumbling down. Don't play this one if you hate spiders, because they are creepy. Millie and Molly is a new game from the legendary Carlton Handley, who's made many games in the past, but just recently came back to the C64. You can hear an interview with him on this week's Retro Hour podcast with Dan Wood, Rabbi Abbott, and Joe Fox. The link will be in the description. This is a puzzle game with 100 levels, where you have to figure out how to dispose of the monsters on each level. The puzzles are really great, and you eventually have to switch between the main characters to win. It also has a great rewind mechanic, so if you make a mistake, which you will, you can rewind a bit and fix it. That sounds like cheating, but it really is a fantastic part of the puzzle element. You can download this from carltonhandley.itch.io and it costs just a few bucks. Saul crossed the graphics and Hase Axelsen Svala did the music. Our next game is Le Abbe de Mort. This game was Indie Retro News 2019 Game of the Year. You are a 13th century Cathar cleric on the run from Crusaders and end up hiding in an old church with a dark secret. Collect the 12 crosses and discover the secrets of this ancient and evil monastery. This is truly a beautiful game, programmed by Antonio Savano with graphics and sound done by Saul Cross, based on an original game by Locomalito and Grizer 87 
this beautiful game needs to be added to your collection. And guess what? Jeremy from Double Sided Games has decided to give this away free for the digital ver version. Check it out at www.doublesidedgames.com. Miss Rodman for the Commodore 64 is really an updated version of Rodman. The levels are similar, but a few fixes have been implemented, and of course, all the enemies have been renamed. The playstyle is the same, and it is available on cartridge from www.thefuturewas8bit.com. Run Demon Run is the next one on our list. I'm not generally a fan of endless runners, but this is an incredible technical achievement on the Commodore 64, with incredibly smooth graphics and great parallax effects. Jump and duck to see how far you can get in this game, published by Cytronic Software and created by Akeem Volkers, Trevor Story, and Richard Bayless. You can name your price starting at $3.99 at cytronic.itch.io slash demon. There are also physical copies available on the Cytronic website. Neutron is our next game. This incredible game is from Sarah Jane Avery, who has created many games in the past for many different platforms. This is a solid shoot 'em up with beautiful graphics, great power ups, and fun and level bosses. She also created a Christmas themed version called Sandtron last year. Sarah's currently working on two new games, The Briley Witch Chronicles and Soul Force, possibly the largest shoot 'em up ever to appear on the Commodore 64. Download this game and name your own price, but be generous on sarahjaneavery.itch.io. Here we have Vegetables Deluxe. My friend Mike Richmond created this great Match 3 tile game, which I reviewed a few months back. This is a classic for sure and should be added to your collection. Jeremy from Double Sided Games is currently offering this one free also for the digital copy on his website www.doublesidedgames.com. Shadow Over Hawksmill is a brand new Commodore 64 game inspired by HP Lovecraft. Shadow Over Hawksmill is a great survival horror game. You play as an investigator checking out the disappearance of the people of Hawksmill. Ammo is limited and the environment is quite creepy. The game and graphics were done by Trevor Story, the audio by the ever so talented Saul Cross. You can get a digital copy or maybe even order the boxed copy from Cytronic Software. The Commodore Plus 4 does not get enough gaming love in the community, so I wanted to cover Stephen Vogt's Curse of Rabenstein for this platform. This is a text and graphics adventure with a nice two-word parser system with stunning graphics on the Plus 4 using its 121 color palette. It's also available on the Commodore 64 and Amiga platforms and platforms such as the Spectrum Next and the PC. You cannot die in this adventure, so prepare to spend a few hours solving this mystery. Pick this one up for your favorite platform. Name your own price, but pay this great team for their work at 8bitgames.itch.io slash Rabenstein. Now, let's move on to the Amiga. Graham Cowie did a fantastic port of the Rygar arcade game that's playable on an AGA Amiga. He used the original art files grabbed from the MAME implementation of the arcade game. This is an incredible conversion of the game, again by Graham Cowie, DFL Silver, DJ Metune, Ross, PHX, and Kevin Saunders. This was designed as a quarter muncher, so the difficulty is pretty high in the game, but this is one worth playing on your AGA Amiga for sure. It also supports a two-button mouse or gamepad, which makes it even more playable. Links to the download are in the description. Our next Amiga game is Tiny Little Slug. This game just came out a week or two ago. Amiga Bill just had an interview with a game designer on his Twitch stream and I will link to that in the description. 
This gorgeous OCS ECS game has a really interesting premise. You are a slug trying to get to a yummy strawberry, and it appears you have to travel through multiple worlds and defeat multiple bosses to get to it. One thing though, your slug can't hurt anybody. Well, because he's a slug. You have to slime your way across walls and ceilings, do quests for other bugs you meet, and traverse all the levels to finally get to your yummy strawberry. This works on everything from an Amiga 1000 up to a CD32. The slug controls quite nicely and the graphics and audio are top notch. This is a perfect game for the Amiga, no doubt about it. You can pick this game up as a digital version or on floppy or CD from AmigaShop.org. Add this to your collection for sure. Invia is our next Amiga game. This one is just a demo of an upcoming game. It's a brand new shoot 'em up for OCS Amigas, but will run on any of them with one megabyte of RAM. The final version will have six levels with power ups for your weapons available. The demo is quite fun and challenging, and I'm looking forward to the full version. Links to this demo are in the description. Now on to one of my current favorites, Reshoot R. This is a shoot 'em up created by Richard Lowenstein with some graphics by the awesome Kevin Saunders and music by Martin Aham. This AGA only game has to be played to be believed. It is so smooth and so flawless. The game works with most accelerator cards, has multiple levels of parallax scrolling, and features awesome enemies and bosses. It would be easy to mistake this for a modern game on the Switch. To be honest, it's that good. It's available for sale or as a download or physical copy from AmigaShop.org. Here we have Trap Runner, which was released in 2019 by Frank Will and Garrett Will and was published by APC TCP Germany or AmigaShop.org. This is a great platformer that is just perfect for the Amiga and runs on most OCS ECS systems with one megabyte or more. It is a typical save the girl platformer as these things tend to be, but it does it with style and quality. The graphics, sound, and controls are all top notch on this game. Secret areas and challenging platforming are the highlights. This game is available as a boxed version from many vendors. I picked mine up from www.amigaonthelake.com. Black Dawn Rebirth is one that I reviewed for the Amiga just a few months back. You can check out my review link in the description. Double Sided Games is the publisher and Sean Waters is the creator with some music and sounds by Mike Richmond. If you want a space dungeon crawler to sink your teeth into during this long break, this may be just the game for you. Think of a space version of Dungeon Master and you'll get the idea for this game. Digital copies are still available from Double Sided Games. Here is another brand new game with a really interesting and unique premise. This one's called Rotator from Timothy John Gilbert and Sean Waters. It was amazingly developed in the Amos programming language and plays very smoothly. It's a very different type of game. You're a bouncy little ship that you control, in air quotes, and bounce around the screen trying to grab diamonds and other items to unlock the exit to the level. All the while, your time counts down as deadly water rises from the bottom of the screen. The controls take about five minutes to get used to, but once you take the time to do it, this is an incredible puzzle game. Trying to figure out how to get to the next platform can be a real challenge. The game runs on ECS systems, but really needs 2 mega chip RAM to run properly. You can order it from Cytronic Software on citronic.itch.io slash rotator for $6.99 or more, I definitely recommend this game as it is quite addicting.
Now, if you can't find something to play in that list of games for our Commodore machines, just go play Fortnite or something and, you know, watch Ninja or whoever that is. But I think that there's some great offerings out there, it's brand new games, and more of them coming out too. So support your local publisher, support your game creators, send them money. This is a hard time for all of us. Uh, buy these games. Don't just find a free download link for them. Just spend a couple bucks on them if you can. The ones that are being offered for free, fantastic. You know what? Send them a couple bucks anyways, just because you're nice people. I'd like to say a big thank you to all of my wonderful patrons on Patreon. Here's the link for my Patreon page. If you'd like to support me, I would really appreciate it. it just means I'm going to be able to uh, do more cool things in the future including things like buying Trap Runner, like I just did. I just bought the boxed copy this week. Comes with a manual, comes with a double-sided, double-density disc, and it comes with a cool fold-out Trap Runner poster. That's going up on the wall. Got this from my pals over at Amiga on the Lake. I'll put their website right down here. 16 bucks, something like that. Not bad for a, a relatively brand new game. But thanks to all my patrons, here's the list right here, happily scrolling down your screen. You guys are awesome. Congratulations on making it to the high score table. But until next time, enjoy playing those games on our retro machines. And this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, signing out.